this morning, or if you were listening, I was telling a little story about going through some antique family information. And uh, well, they call that when it's real old. It's not antique. It's uh, vintage. archives. Vintage. Oh, anyway, way back. Vintage. Yeah. What? Vintage. 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 That's a good word. Vintage. That's what I or I'm vintage. I'm not. Hey, I love it. Anybody know what this? Uh, Sermon title for pastor sermon tonight is. Oh, ah, we're good church this morning. Gotta fix it. Part two. Yeah. Part two. Part two. Uh, the foundation has something to do with what we can do as Christians and uh, standing up for what we think God has for us to do. And uh, you being here tonight is a good testimony. And that's I don't I haven't seen his outline for sure, but. What you're doing here tonight by being here and watching on the computer or on the TV, all of you who are participating in our service, that's one thing that we can do. Show up for church, show up and have a good testimony whenever you get a chance, and uh, I'll let the pastor finish that sermon. Thank you for the introduction. All right. I think I could just sit down and let him preach and we'd have a good service, wouldn't we? Amen, I heard that too. Just Boy, the doctor operated on my eyes, but I'm still here. <laughs> and I am so blessed. I shouldn't make fun of that or make light of it, because I am so blessed. Uh, you know, some of you just don't know what it's like not to be able to see. Yep. And the Lord has really blessed me. I can see better now than I could probably a long time ago. Amen. Since I'm a vintage person. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to remember that word. That may help me remember that word. So let me <laughs> time I get home, I'll probably forget it. Uh, she's not. Let us all sing together. I don't know where all that stuff came from, but I'm just glad to be up and around. Thank the Lord. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Gibsonton, Florida. I am so glad you're here. Uh, that got the audience kind of warmed up. And now that you're comfortable in your seat, you know, move over about three spaces. No, I don't do that either. Uh, work for the night is coming, and that's part of what we need to be doing. We need to work for the Lord. The words and the notes, well, the words will be on the screen, but the notes will be on page 439. And you may just remain seated if you would like. But let's really sing out. Work for the night is coming. It goes by pretty quick, so we use all three of those verses. Thank you, orchestra. Work for the night is coming. Work in the morning light. Work while the moon is sparkling. Work in its springing light. Work when the day goes brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is
I did not give her a heads up on when she was going to be on the program, just that she was. And Miss Frieda. Frieda. And Miss uh, Frieda. Uh, okay. I heard rumors of the fact that there was a new group in town. <laughs> <laughs> you pray for these ladies, Frida and Jean. Any color, any mic's okay. Four hundred and forty one will be our next hymn. This is because she's got it totally memorized, and I almost have it memorized. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, returning to the stage after a long absence, <laughs> Mrs. Frida Miller. <laughs>
me, but because he sent a message and said it was very important that we give back in finances. And that's another thing that we can do to bolster our foundation as a Christian. Father, we thank you for uh, loving us and drawing us together. As we sing this other verse, Lord, we ask that you would bless the verse. And then as our gentlemen receive our offering, we would carefully give you the praise, honor, and glory. Let's sing one more verse of love and faith. And then the orchestra has some other music for our offertory. So Dark clouds, they part. 
started And that sun She comes shining through again So Lord help me not to crumble Or complain About the tough road I have
And so I turned to the scriptures this morning. And the Bible talked about the foundation. If the foundation can be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, we talked this morning concerning the, the foundation and how the foundation is being attacked. How the foundation of the church and marriage and civil law. And we went through a list of things that, that um, are under great attack today. Um, and I believe from the work of the devil, the wicked one, as he is working in those who will permit him to work in their lives. But then the psalmist David did not only say, uh, if the foundation be destroyed, and we talked about that. But then he followed up. What? What can the righteous do? So I think that's an important message for us tonight. To know what, what can we do? What is expected of us? And I, and I certainly uh, cannot exhaust uh, that tonight. And, but I could just share with you some things that are on my heart and mind. Some things that I see. And I hope that uh, will strengthen all of us. As we live in these days and we listen to the media, we watch what's going on in our world today, and we say, what can we do? I guess we've all asked that question. What can we do uh, as Christians during this time? Well, let's just read that verse together and then I'll begin my message. If the foundation be destroyed, and that's a terrible thought, isn't it? That's a terrible thought to think that the foundation, we talk about the Word of God, we talk about home and marriage, we talk about um, the church and all of those things and civil government. If all of those things, that's the foundation for which all society that God has trained and put together and organized for man to live under. And if that be destroyed, that puts us in a real predicament, doesn't it? That puts us in a different place of, the, of life that we've never lived in before. But the Bible has some answers. And here it says, what can the righteous do? Well, I think the Word of God gives us some indication as to what it is that you and I can do. Can I read you in Hebrews chapter 6, in verse number 18? He said, lay hold on hope. That's the bottom. That's the bottom. That, that bottom word. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. I think you're, isn't it great tonight to know, number one, we're not hopeless. We have a hope. Amen. We're not left in this world to, just to drift along without any hope. If I had no hope tonight, tonight, I would probably be joining some of those. In, do they still have Chattahoochee? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Uh, it, it would drive me crazy. Uh, you would be insane, and worried, and you couldn't sleep. But I'll tell you something tonight. You and I can lay our heads on our pillows tonight, and we can sleep well because we have a blessed hope. Amen. We have a hope that God has given to us, and He says in First Peter chapter one and verse number thirteen, "Lay hold." The hope until the end. Hope till the end. Don't ever quit. And that word hope there is our faith. Our hope. It's what we believe. It's what we know that God is in control. So we have, what can we do? Well, we cling to our, our faith. Amen. So the first thing I look, and we're going to look right down at Psalms. There's only seven verses. But we're going to find the answer tonight that the psalmist laid out for us. I think in these seven verses of the book of Psalms, chapter 11. Verse number 1. Put our trust in the Lord. Now ultimately that's where it all begins. That's where it all starts. We cannot. We cannot let our trust in God uh, somehow be destroyed. We must remember that all the time God is in control. Amen. Nothing is going to happen to you or I or anything unless God permits it. And sometimes we wonder why God permits certain things, but God is God. And God is in control, and He knows what He's doing. And in verse number 1, He said, In the Lord put I my trust. That's what we need to do today. 
So whenever we read and see the things that are going on, we cannot somehow let our faith in God and our trust in the Lord somehow be destroyed. And I know sometimes it's tested. I know sometimes we feel like we're being pushed to the limit. But we need to know this. As the psalmist said, in the Lord we put our trust. So that's the foundation right there of how and what to do is to make sure that we continue to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Now, in verse number B, the first verse, go back to verse 1, the latter part of the verse. Trust the Lord with all the heart that you. How say you to my soul flee as a bird to the mountain? And then in verse number 2, we go, For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the stream, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. Man, I read that and I said, I've seen the vision of that on television. I see where good people, innocent people are being attacked. Good people and, and churches are being attacked. And, and But uh, here we find here, for those the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow. I mean, I would say to you tonight, and I say this for a Sunday night crowd, I probably would not say too much about this on a Sunday morning crowd, but you tonight are more into the things of God and into the Word of God and you trust the Lord, but um, this is something that I think is important. I think we have to have a plan. We have to have a plan, a, pl a place, and a plan of protection. I think God's people need to, to realize God has given us guidance. God has given us wisdom. And uh, God expects us, I believe, to uh, have a plan of protection. We need to have a plan of protection for our church. And I can say to you, and I say this to a Sunday night crowd, I know we're being watched uh, live stream, but we have set up a plan within our church of security. We're, we're having a professional to come in and to train our men who, are, who work with us in that area so that if something ever does happen, we've got a plan. A plan of protection of the people. And I think that is necessary. But I can also say this. I think all of us need to have a plan of protection for our family. A family for our, not just for the church, but for your home. And uh, I think God's people need to, you know, well, I'm just going to, God will protect me. Well, you know, sometimes God gives us the means to protect ourselves, and we need to use those means of protection that God has given us. And so I don't, I'm trying to be careful about how I put this tonight and how I say it, but uh, I think we ought to be prepared to protect our family. Amen. I think we ought to be prepared to protect our home. And our belonging then. And uh, so God's people need to have a plan of protection. The Bible says in Luke. Here's another, a verse that you don't hear very much out of. Luke chapter number 22 verse number 36. Jesus told his disciples. Then said he unto them. But now he that hath a purse. You got some money. You got some money. You got a purse. Let him take it, take your money. Likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments, his scrip, and buy one. Amen. Now, again, I say all of this carefully. We don't look for trouble. But I think we ought to be prepared. In a day, in a time, in an hour that we live in, we ought to have a plan of protection. And we ought to be willing as men to protect our home. I uh, was just made aware the other day, and I, and I just say this, that some of you might be interested in it, but even for our ladies and for all of us, I think this is good. I saw the other day, they have now a, uh, a, it's not a, it's a, what's what, that you're spraying people? Mace. 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 
made. But, but it's, it's not made, but it's another product that they come out with. And it's, it's a very small little item. It looks like a little tiny pistol. And it's good for, you, you can shoot it twice. It's brand new on the market. And uh, uh, it's good for about 13 feet in distance. And uh, it's, it's a good one year of at least some defense. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this out is because, you know, we see, we see things that we don't like seeing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think uh, uh, the new lady, it, it, it's light, it's, it's uh, easy to carry, it's, and uh, it's, uh, put it in your handbag, and, and you know, if you find yourself in a bad position, I think we need to be prepared to protect ourselves. Amen. And I think the Bible clearly teaches that. And uh, not only in the book of Psalms, but in the Gospels, we find uh, other descriptions of places. I find where old Peter took out his sword and cut off the ear. And uh, the Lord had to heal it. <laughs> but, uh, brother, he was ready to fight. He was ready to defend the Lord. And uh, so, I say that carefully, and I don't want to be taken out of context, context but I, I think God's people need to realize that we can't just pray. We do need to pray. We do need to trust the Lord. Amen. But when God gives us the ability and the, what we need to maybe to kind of help take care of ourselves, it's like the guy that said, well, you know, the storm was coming, the floods were rising, he was on top of his roof. And the helicopter flew over and said, Here, get up. Here's the ladder. Climb up. Get, no, I'm going to wait. The Lord's going to take care of me. <laughs> well, the Lord sent the helicopter. <laughs> then, well, you know, and so the Lord has given us means. And I, I, and I be careful about what I'm trying to say to you tonight, but uh, I think it's time. Amen. I just think it's time. Uh, in the era and the climate that we're living in today in America, and literally around the world. Uh, the enemy of America has said we've got one desire, and that is to burn down every city. They said that on television. The leader of the Antipas group said that we just want to burn down every city. That's our goal. They want to burn down every church. And they would love to destroy every Christian. And so... I think we need to, as Christians, pray, yes, trust the Lord, yes, but God gives us guidance and God gives us wisdom. And uh, if you want more information about what I just mentioned to you, I have it uh, on my phone. And I'm going to order some for myself. Just uh, I, I'd rather use that than have to use a weapon. <laughs> as a last resort, to use a weapon. But... Uh, uh, I think uh, it's just something you need to pray about and something that you need even to think about. So we, we find that what can the righteous do? David put that question out there. What can we do? I think we put there under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for us to think about it. For us to meditate upon it. For us to give some thought to it because we are living in these days that we're now living in when everything that is godly is, is the enemy of the world. And we must realize that they're out to destroy. They're out to destroy us. They're out to destroy everything that stands for the cause of Christ. So, then we find in verse number 4 of the book of Psalm that we need to have faith. Faith. God is on the throne. The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. And I like this part of the last part of the verse. His eyes behold. His eyes is tried the children of men. God is very much aware of where we are. God is very much aware of what we're facing in our lives today and what's going on in the world and even in America. And so we, we need to just know that God is watching. And that God knows and, and that uh, um, He is on His throne. And um, God is in total control. Nothing, you know, they, they cut off Paul's head. 
they beheaded him. Peter, they hung on the cross upside down. That was his choice for dying. But uh, we never know what God is going to allow to happen in our lives. Good people sometimes face bad things, terrible things, as even Paul and Peter and all of the disciples. But you know, I am like going back to my other point about protection and a plan. You know, if God's people had not stood up physically and armed, we would be not the country we are today. Amen. Um, I think about most Americans, we don't realize how close we come to losing World War II. Yeah. It was very close. Yeah. That war could have went either way. But thank God, good men, yeah. good men, Christian men, were willing to fight to defend our freedom. I think about the pilgrims and how they came over here. Did you know there never would have been a revolutionary war? We would still be under the bondage of, of England and the Church of England if good Christian men had not stood up and fought a fight. It wasn't pretty. It really wasn't. But I just, sometimes we lose sight of all of that. We're enjoying what we have here. And America has enjoyed the prosperity and, and all the peace that we've had because good men were willing to take up arms and defend their nation. I think good men will defend their homes and their families. So, we need to realize that God is on the throne. There's a wonderful God in heaven who loves us and cares about us. And yes, He sees us going through terrible times, but God sometimes tests us. Not because He doesn't know who we are, but He tests us so we can find out for ourselves who we are. God already knows the beginning to the end of everything I will do and you will do. But He allows me to go under certain pressure and testing. Not so that He can find out who I am, but so that I can find out who I am. Sometimes we think we're big. Sometimes we think we're strong. Until we're dead under fire. Until we get tested. And then we fall. Our knees get a little wobbly sometimes. So we are tested. The church of Jesus Christ is, has always been tested. And will continue to be tested until the Lord comes. And we must know that. And we must know that God is on the throne. He already knows how it's going to turn out. And so we need to know and to realize that and he, he sees everything that's going on. And nothing can happen without Him allowing it to happen. And again, I go back, He allows something to happen so that we can discover who we are. How strong we are. How strong is our faith. How strong is our commitment to live for God and serve the Lord. And not to buckle under the ungodly pressure of those who want to destroy the church and Christianity and the home and marriage and all of the things that I spoke on even this morning. So we've got to realize that God is watching. And so I've already alluded to this a little bit, but in verse number 5, God's people will be tested. The Lord tries the righteous. We don't like that part. We like smooth sailing. We don't like conflict. That's part of our nature. The life has always brought us challenges. Whether personal challenges or challenges of our nation, then many challenges. So the Lord tried the righteous. So we're tried. We're tested. Now I didn't I didn't pass too many tests in school. 
Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you one test I want to pass. I want to pass the test of faithfulness. Mm-hmm. I want to pass the test of righteousness. Mm-hmm. The Lord trieth the righteous, the saved. See, just because we're saved and born again doesn't eliminate conflict. In fact, it invites conflict. But here we find the Lord trying the righteous. We're tested. I think America's being tested right now. I think before it's all said and done, the church is going to be tested. Like it hasn't been tested in a long, long time. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I just know who holds tomorrow. Amen. So the Lord tries the wicked, tries to write the blood. Now listen to this. But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hate. God hates sin. So we we know that God hates what we see in the streets of America. We know that God hates the things that are being said and done. I've never heard such ungodly wickedness. The language and children involved. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought in my life that I would see it on the streets of America. I've never thought I would see a, a people turn against authority, against those who have the responsibility of protecting us and taking care of us. I never thought they would become the enemy. That they have become to those who want to destroy and to tear down our country. So there's a test. We find that the, but God hated violence. And him that loveth violence, it, they just cannot wait for night time to come for more violence. Have you ever noticed it? It's always night time when they really want to do their evil deeds. Amen. Sin is that way. Devil is that way. Yeah. Darkness. You and we like the light. Now, I kid Paul all the time and he realized I can't go to stand it when the light's not all the way up. <laughs> I, you know, I know I've heard a little electricity, extra electricity at home and at church, but I want the lights on. <laughs> I don't like to live in darkness. That's just my nature. I just don't. I want. A, I want the room to be bright. I'll make an open confession. I shouldn't even bring the first one to the answer. But I had done something in my house. <laughs> oh, a couple of years back, I had a car put in, and I didn't like it from the minute I put it in. It cost me a lot of money, so I just said, "Well, I'm going to live with it. I'm going to live with it." Every time I looked at it, it would be pressing. It was dark. Finally, I said to myself, you're not going to live for so long. Get, you might as well get, get it fixed. It was dark. So I went and bought something light. I bought something that brightened it up, the room up. And uh, oh, what a difference it made. Right? But God's people like the light. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. We like the gospel. Amen. We like preaching. We like gospel singing. And this is up. It's encouraging. Look at the music of the world. Most of it's negative. Christian music is positive. Christian music is uplifting. Christian music inspires our faith. But the music of the world and the ways of the world is dark and dreary. There's nothing there to inspire us and give us hope. Make us want to really go forward and no, it's, 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 it's everything down. Everything going in the wrong direction. I want to tell you something. The saved, the born again, the child of God, we're going in the right direction. Amen. Amen. But the world is going in the wrong direction tonight. And God hates evil. So I, I use that to challenge us to, to, what can we do? What can we do in the foundation? Brothers, just 
Stay in touch with God. Live for the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all of our ways, just acknowledge Him in our life and in everything that we do and the way that we live. Yes, God's people are going to be tested. Our faith in God will be tested. The Lord triumphs the upright. He tests us. How strong are we tonight? Are we going to give in? Are we going to bow down to the enemy? Are we going to stand up for God? Amen. Are we going to stand up for the Word of God? Amen. Are we going to stand up for the thing that keeps our homes and foundations of our faith strong? Our church. See, these are the things that we're going to be tested. I don't know how severe we're going to be tested. I don't know that. Only God knows that. But I'm just telling you, the Bible gives us enough to know that we need to be preparing ourselves for the test that may well come upon our lives. Then we find in verse number 6 of what can we do? Remember this. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their coming. I quote in my notes, their day of judgment will come. Live for God. Serve the Lord. However, we, how, whatever way we go out of this world, I want to go out with my head up high. Yeah. I want to go out knowing that I live for the Lord and serve the Lord. If I lose my life doing that, then I know immediately where I'm going to be. Right. And that's the way we've got to live. We've got to know that we can live for God and serve the Lord and, and know that judgment belongs unto God. It belonged in the hands of the Lord. So he said, And a horrible tempest shall be their portion of their cup. So God knows what's going on. I've said that before. God knows the righteous and God knows the ungodly. And God will deal appropriately with each. So then we find in verse number 7, as I close tonight in, in this psalm of David and these scriptures, what can the righteous do? Well, the righteous can just love the Lord. This is what it said. For the righteous, Lord loveth righteousness. You want God a blessing come on your life? Live for God. The righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. God, can I use my thought, God smiles upon the upright. God smiled upon the child of God who, and God will bless the child of God. Even in the trials that may well come in our life, God will give us the grace and the strength that we need in the time to come. If we'll live for God. We sing that song, His grace is sufficient. His grace for the child of God if we live for God, if we serve the Lord, if we trust the Lord, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. I want to be in a position of doing and living so God loves my life. God loves the way that we live. Oh, we're not, we don't just sit back and let everybody run over. That's not what I'm saying. But God loves righteousness. We need to pray. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need to humble ourselves like maybe we've never humbled ourselves before. God loves righteousness. If we want the blessing of God, even the protection of God upon our homes, our family, upon our church, our nation, then we better turn to the Lord in righteousness. And God will bless us. Many verses in the book of Proverbs talk about the righteous. God will bless the righteous. So I think it behooves us tonight to make sure that we look at our lives and say, you know, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be faithful. I'm not going to deny the Lord. I'm not going to deny my church, my family. I'm going to trust God. 
And I'm going to ask God to give me wisdom and strength and protection. And for the Lord's hand to be upon us in all that we do. And guidance. Oh, in wisdom. Wisdom. Any man like wisdom, let him ask of the Lord, who giveth unafraid to me. And I pray every day for wisdom. And I wrote in the bulletin. I hope you read the bulletin. But we're living in times that uh, yeah, sometimes I just say, Lord, what do I do? What, what, how do I lead during these days? And I ask God daily for the wisdom in every, every home. You need to be asking God for wisdom. For the time will come. And I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know where. But the time will come, every one of us, when we're going to be tested. We're going to be tested in a way maybe that we've never been tested before. And I think we need to be prepared to be tested in every way. Physically prepared. Spiritually prepared. In every way. Emotionally prepared. But we don't know only God knows what tomorrow holds. So I know sometimes that's not a maybe a pretty picture, but life isn't always pretty either. There's things that we face in life that um, it comes our way, we can't do anything about it. But God has given us the book. God has given us guidance. And I pray and you pray. For God to help us. To give us the strength that we need. The faith that we need. And can I say even the willingness that we need. To be able to defend ourselves. Defend holiness and righteousness. I don't think we ought to just sit back and let the devil's crowd run over us. Kind of like the old sheriff over there in Polk County. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he told him, he said, you can, I, I just advise you, don't be bursting in to some of the homes over here because they're going to burst you right back out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, that's not a pretty picture, but we need to be ready. We must be prepared spiritually. Don't get prepared physically if you're not prepared spiritually. Because you get yourself in trouble. But be prepared spiritually above everything. And ask God to give you the grace, guidance, and wisdom. Let's stand together. Thank you tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we know we may have some troubling days ahead of us. You think to know, Lord, that our nation is in trouble. God's people are under attack. Our homes are under attack. Our churches are under attack. And Lord, I just pray that God would give us guidance. God would give us wisdom in all that we do. That we might always be in your will. But not be afraid. Not be afraid to stand up against evil and ungodliness. And so Father, may your hand be upon us. May your hand be upon our nation, I pray, O oh God. Upon those who lead us and guide us, may your hand be upon them. And Lord, may you give wisdom to them. And Father, we pray and ask that you put down the rebellion in our nation. That you, dear Lord, to bring it to naught. And God's people might humble themselves and come unto you and seek your face. And ask you, your God, to heal our land. Lord, that's our prayer tonight. It's in your hand. We're in your hand. We're your children. And so, Lord, pray for strength. We ask for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And God bless our church. God bless our church. Number 438, Footsteps of Jesus.
hope that the message will be uh, an encouragement to us and a strength to us. Uh, only God knows what's ahead. Amen. But uh, we're in God's hands. Amen. And uh, as children of God, we don't need to be fearful. We just need to be strong in the faith and in the Lord. And uh, you take it from there. And God bless you and God bless you. Father, thank you tonight for our church. Thank you for our families, our homes, our nation. Oh God, how we need thee, dear Lord. And we pray, dear Lord, for divine help. Father, you've been so good to this country. Lord, you've blessed this nation. And Lord, we really don't deserve all that you've blessed us with, but you've blessed us, Lord, and we're grateful and we're, we're thankful. If we ask you, dear Lord, to heal our land, put down the rebellion, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to live for you, serve you, so that you can honor us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Amen. Yes, sir. Two ladies, when you go to Walmart, buy your can of walls and horn spray. I keep and one spray. by my bed. Okay, well, it does the same thing as pepper spray. Yeah. And it treats 20 people. Oh, yeah. does it? So get you a couple cans, put a can in your car, can your wallet. There you go. If you don't want to get a gun, get a wall spray. Thank you all. Thank you.